Hello and welcome to Quarrelsome Rhinoceros Stitches, episode number 28. My name is Monica, I'm the host. You can find me as Quarrelsome Rhino on Instagram. You can find me as Mo Littlefield, M-O-L-I-T-T-L-E-F-I-E-L-D uh, on Twitter. And you can find me as Morux, M-O-R-U-X on um, Ravelry. So, um, this podcast is about knitting and sometimes a little bit of spinning, not today, but sometimes, um, and crochet, and mainly just a fiber arts podcast, you could say. Um, I am located in uh, Maine in the United States. Um, it's kind of springy here. It feels almost like I could go outside without a sweater. I'm wearing a skirt. I'm so excited. Um, winter has just felt so long this year, um, and I feel like I say that every year, but whatever. It felt really long this year. Um, so yeah, um, I'm coming to you from Maine. Uh, I hope you enjoy my podcast. Um, if you're new here, welcome. Um, I hope that my craziness keeps you around, I guess. Um, <laughs> So yeah, let's get right into it. I don't have a whole lot to share today, so it's gonna be a little bit of a shorter episode. Um, I've been going through some changes at work. Um, there, are, so my I work for a local business, um, and they have two locations, and I've been trained at the second location, um, and I, I'm one of the managers. So, um, and I'm working at both stores, but I'm being being shifted primarily to be working at our second location. Um, and it's a lot smaller, but it's a lot, um, it's very different, that's all. Um, so I've been kind of going through that transition. So I haven't had a whole lot of knitting time. I have had a lot of book reading time, so I'm kind of excited about that. Um, <clears throat> so um, I guess we'll get right into it. And we'll start off by um, talking about the shawl that I'm wearing. So this is one of my very favorite makes. Um, this is um, the Hallibop shawl. It's a pattern by Amber O'Brien. It was a mystery knit along um, with her. And I absolutely love how this is constructed. Um, it is a really great shawl. Um, of course, as mo with most shawls, it starts here in the middle and then you make it bigger and then you add on this side bit. But um, it is it is a really great knit. I think it is um, well worth the time. So all three of these yarns are Knit Picks yarns. And I have shown this on the podcast before. I believe I was podcasting when um, she did her mystery knit along. So um, this yarn, he, they're all three Knit Picks yarns. So this yarn here is the, it is the Stroll Tonal. And I want to say the colorway is called Orbit. Um, or something of that nature. Um, this one is the Hawthorne Blueberry Speckle, and then this one is the Stroll in Dove Heather. So there's that. Um, this shawl desperately needs a reblocking. It's got this really pretty Pico bind off that is now rolling up because it. I only blocked it once last year or uh, whenever I made it, and I haven't blocked it again. Um, so it desperately needs a new another blocking, um, and I probably should just wash it anyway. Um, but it is one of my very favorite shawls, and I didn't wear it very much this year um, in favor of my meandering shawl, but I just pulled it back out of my my sort of shawl bin that I have in my room, and I have forgot how much I love it. So, and it perfectly matches this um, really great Douglas Adams inspired T-shirt that I'm wearing today. So. Anyway, um, yeah, so this is one of my very favorite makes. Um, if you haven't knit an Amber O'Brien pattern, I would absolutely suggest going to look at um, all of her shawls. She has amazing, amazing color. Like, she uses really great colors. She uses 
really great textures. I think that's my favorite part is that she likes to mix sort of textures and lace knitting. And that's sort of what I try to do with my own designs. Um, so that's, um, that's that. I guess I have nothing bad to say about this pattern. I really would love to knit it, knit it again if I had, um, if I had the right colors for it, because I would really like to make like, um, sort of a darker version with, with like, um, with this lace being the pop of bright, like maybe green or something. I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> enough about my shawl. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> I got a cold a few weeks ago and I have recovered mostly from it, but I still have the lingering cough. Um, so I'm going to jump into content now. <laughs> um, I finished a pair of socks. Um, so this pair of socks I showed you, I'm calling them my lazy socks. Um, I showed them to you um, when they were not quite finished. So why I'm calling them my lazy socks is that I cast on, um, I guess I can show you this sock, the actual sock. So I haven't woven in any of the ends. Um, I've just popped the heels in and um, finished off the toes. Um, I am thinking about writing up what I did for these um, and just releasing it as a free pattern simply um, because I haven't really seen anyone else do the what I what I did specifically. Um, so I cast on at this cuff and then I knit all the way down the leg and decreased for the foot stitches. And this is where it differs from something like um, the Afterthought Everything Heel or socks, where I believe you just keep knitting in a tube until you get done and knit the, uh, the cuff. Um, so I measured where I was going to put my heel in while I was knitting. Um, and so I, so I knit from the cuff down to where I would put in the heel. Um, and then I knit for the foot and I did all of the measurements beforehand. So I didn't have to do it after because I'm not really good at measuring finished knitting. Um, I'm fairly good at estimating how long it's going to have to be for a foot. Um, but I'm not really good at just measuring finished knitting. I don't know what the distinction is anyway. Um, and then I decreased for the toes. Um, and then I put in a piece of scrap yarn here. Um, and then I left a long tail to do a Kitchener stitch later, but I was feeling really lazy. This is why I'm calling them my lazy socks. Um, I was feeling really lazy. I didn't feel like making a Kitchener stitch. So I put in scrap yarn and then I started increasing for the toe of this sock. Let me see if I can get this to go back to being flat here. Um, and then I started increasing for the toe for the second sock. Um, and then I knit up the foot, put in some waist yarn, and then I continued up the leg and bound off. Now I'm the bind off and cast on do look slightly different. Um, this is obviously comes in a little bit more. This flares up just the tiniest bit. I did use the twisted cast off. Um, and I think it does look really good because it doesn't actually flare out like most stretchy cast offs do. Um, so I'm hoping that I can get these ends woven in. I'm going to give them a little bit of a soak. It is a cotton and acrylic yarn though. So I'm not sure how well it's going to like actually block. Um, but it, I'm gonna try because there are, um, I really would like to put them on my sock blockers just to see if they will, um, will, the stitches will bloom at all. Um, but yeah, so that is that. I'm done with a pair of socks and I'm super excited about it. So excited. Okay. Um, next. I, of course, I finished one pair of socks, and uh, if you've been watching the podcast for a while, um, you will know that I had a second pair of socks that I had to work on. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't really been in the sock knitting mood, to be honest. 
I have really wanted to concentrate on garments and I think this is sort of a common thing that has happened to a lot of knitters in the community is that they are, I think some people are deeming this the year of the garment. Um, so I'm, I'm actually trying, one of my goals is to have, not to have a whole handmade wardrobe because I really do actually love wearing t-shirts. Um, but I really want to have handmade sweaters and handmade um, shawls and accessories to wear and some hand sewn um, some hand sewn pieces for my for my wardrobe but I so I'm trying to replace all of the sweaters that I have that are store bought with with hand knit ones um, and it's going to be a really long process. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get rid of, say, my hoodie, um, even though I was looking at the hoodie shawl cardigan the other day, and I really want to, really want to make it. Anyway, enough of that. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I, I feel like that's something um, that I want to concentrate on, so I'm more interested in knitting garments than I am in knitting socks. Um, so... I, hold on one second, get my stuff untangled here, okay. So, my grandmother bought this yarn at a yarn store in Portland, Maine, and um, she wants me to knit socks for her out of it, and so I decided, so it is um, from a company called Dunroving Yarns, which I believe is in Maine, I believe it's a local dye. I have no idea. I should have looked that up before I said anything about it. I've just seen them at all of the local yarn stores, so I wonder how local they actually are. Done roving yarns. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're based in Charlotte, Maine. That's what I thought. Sorry, okay. <clears throat> so, Done Roving Yarns, um, and this is the Frolicking Feet in the Worsted Weight, and um, so they're going to be some pretty thick socks, um, but that's good because they're wool. So this is the current colorway, um, and I really do love how these are knitting up. I believe um, they're going to be really cozy socks. And you can see my little progress keeper here. This is um, a unicorn progress keeper from the corner of Craft. Um, so yeah, um, it's not really on there for anything other than this is the this is the front side and this is the back side. So <laughs> I'm not really using it as a progress keeper. I'm just keeping track on which, which side I'm on. Um, but I am really... Um, I'm glad I decided to do them two at a time because I don't feel like I would knit the second sock if I did them one at a time. So they are being done two at a time. And I am probably about halfway done with a foot, I would say. I still have to do some measurements, but I'm pretty getting there. Um, I'm knitting these on a US 4, which is a 3.5 millimeter needle. Um, I searched around for some worsted weight sock patterns and I f didn't find any that I tr that I really liked until I ran across uh, Susan B. Anderson's and of course I loved Susan B. Anderson's pattern because I love she's the sock queen so <laughs> so um, I I she did them cuff down however and I really wanted to knit uh, toe up because I find it easier to cast on for two at a time toe up um, So I just am using the stitch counts that she had in the needle size and I am working out to about the exact same gauge that she got so um, That was pretty that was pretty good um, So hopefully I'll be able to finish those up pretty soon so I can stop knitting socks for a while I really want to knit some more garments um, and speaking of garments, my next work in progress, you will have seen, I, I, I actually lied to you on the last podcast that I, that I, um, that I made. So I was going to knit the pole sweater by Hohi Locatelli. Um, it is the first pattern I think I ever bought on Ravelry and, um, I 
really love the pattern. And so I was going to use the yarn, excuse me, the yarn from my uh, Black Forest Cardigan. I was going to use that yarn, which is uh, Dererum Natura's Serrano base, um, and it's in the plume colorway. I will show it to you here. So it's this yarn here. So I was gonna use this yarn for that sweater. And then I found a pattern by Andrea Mowry that I couldn't say no to when I cast it on. So, <laughs> so, um, so this is the Weekender. Um, let me see if I can get this untangled here. I haven't worked on this in a few days and I will tell you why in just a moment. Okay, so it's, I worked the bottom ribbing and I'm working up the body. I still have about 10 or 15 inches to go before I'm able to do anything else. So it really is just plain sort of stockinette in the round. Um, the really cool thing about this pattern, <coughs> if you've seen the actual pattern itself, and I may try to put a picture in, um, if I think about it while I'm editing. Um, so the, the actual front side of the, of the sweater is this, it's a reverse stockinette stitch um, with this sort of faux seam in the middle. Um, now she has you knit it inside out so that you don't have to do a whole bunch of purl stitches. <laughs> so, um, so that is, that is great. So, um, so yeah, it's basically just plain stockinette in the round. Now I'm a little concerned um, because my gauge is a lot bigger than um, it's I think it's two stitches off of what hers what she suggests in the pattern and um, So it's gonna end up a lot bigger even than the pattern says because the pattern has a 10 inch positive ease so it's going to end up a little bigger than even the 10 inches, but it's supposed to be a big cozy sweater so I don't know if I care enough to rip it out and use a smaller needle. So I think I'm just going to leave it as is and I'm going to modify the rest of the pattern for the gauge that I have. Um, so yeah, I'm really hoping, I mean, I'm sure it'll turn out fine. I just want to make sure that it actually fits me up here. Like, so I know the bottom will be fine. I won't care that the bottom is, is extra big, but I want to make sure that it fits like this part of me. So, cause there are some short row shaping. The, there is some short row shaping I think that you do. There is like, I want to make sure the sleeves actually fit. Cause if the sleeves are too big or too long or whatever, I won't want to wear it. So, yeah, anyway, um, I'm just really hoping that this gauge works out and that I can actually um, finish this sweater. I still have to ball up all the rest of the yarn and I actually, I did wound this one by hand. I found that my ball winder is not strong enough to deal with um, the yarn that I have soaked uh, and put back on the, the Swift. So um, I started just pulling it out and winding it by hand. And so I think that that's gonna be my task for the for today is to wind the rest of the yarn into balls because it's kind of taking over my room. So there's that. Um, so those really are the only things that I've been working on in the last um, few weeks. Uh, like I said, I've been going through sort of a transition at work and I just haven't had as much time to knit as I would really like. Uh, I still have a couple of other projects that I'm working on, but I haven't made any progress on them. So I showed you the shawl that I designed um, in my last episode. I haven't pulled it out to re-knit it yet. Um, and I mean, I'm going to obviously, but it's not um, top priority. I wanna get all of the things I'm supposed to knit for other people out of the way before I knit anything, do any design work. Um, because these, these socks and my mom's shawl, which I haven't worked on, um, are both the only gift knits that I'm, that I am currently working on because I finished the socks for my aunt. So, um, so those are the only gift knits that I'm working on. So I'm hopefully going to be able to start doing a little bit more design work. Um, I want to do a couple of hats. I've had a few bits of inspiration that I have written down, luckily, because <laughs> if I don't write it down, it's just gone forever. Anyway, 
I'm just rambling now. Um, I did um, want to tell you that I made a blog post yesterday um, over at skeinofthought.com. Um, it is um, not knitting related, but it is an interesting um, kind of ridiculous story of something that happened to me. So um, I did record myself reading it. If you would like to go check it out, it is skeinofthought.com. Um, I'll put that up here on the screen. Um, you Again, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, um, Ravelry. I'm all over the place. Um, thank you so much for stopping by and spending a little bit of your time with me. I really do appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and I will see you next time. Bye.